Tommy. Good to catch up. It's I guess it's close to a year that you've kind of called Dubai your second home. How, yeah. how have you settled in and the family? Yeah, it's been great for us. It's um, I think the first thing, obviously, it's a slight change of lifestyle. Um, and even in the hot summer months when we when we come back for the start of school, just um, the amount of times for the kids spending outdoors, I think, um, has been great to see. And I, and I think we're just all being, we're all enjoying being part of the community here. And it's, um, you know, so far been very good. Anytime you move away uh, from your original home, it's always a big step and always nerve wracking. But um, everybody's been great and we've loved being a part of uh, here. You see Frankie running about at the academy. Loves it, loves it. Um, he's pretty much my full-time coach. Um, it's, it's honestly, it's great to see because he's a similar age to me when I started. And, um, and I guess um, watching him like now start to grow up and watching his love for the game is something that's really, really cool and um, watching how he progresses. But I just think for us, we, we have the academy here and we're a big part of that. And um, watching all the people, whether they're kids or adults, enjoy it and spending time here, but especially when it's your own, uh, watching our three boys here and um, how much they're progressing and how much they're enjoying it is something that's really beautiful to see. I've seen Oscar with his name on a few uh, trophies Doing recently, well, yeah. isn't he? That must be cool to see as well. Myself and Claire, our one thing for the kids is uh, you just want them to be passionate about something, um, something to set their mind to. The fact that it's golf uh, is, is great and um, I can definitely do that thing. and. Um, yeah, watching them, you know, have some results to smile about and enjoy the game and progress every day is has been great. And, um, you know, our life, uh, you know, between my job, Claire's job, uh, and now the kids playing, it's uh, obviously a very golf, uh, golf based life. Let's chat about the academy. It's a pretty nice facility, isn't it? Oh, it's it's mega. Yeah, I think, um, you know, having the opportunity, you know, the, the academy and, and the visions that that we have for it you know, now and in the future is something that, you know, put a lot of thought into and want to keep it growing. And then uh, along with DP World, I suppose, sharing a vision and then having the opportunity to bring it somewhere where the facilities are as good as these. Yeah, it's, it's such a special opportunity for us. And, you know, for me, from, from a personal standpoint, having the opportunity to come here and practice and and work on my game here is is amazing. And like, I mean, I'm practicing at you know, on facilities that I could only dream about when I was younger, and I had good, good options as well. So, um, for everybody here, very, very lucky, and um, being able to pass on lessons and be around a team that's helping people progress with, you know, along with the facilities is is just amazing, and I, you know, enjoy it every single day. And it just, um, I have a strong passion for the game. Of course, I do. It's where all my dreams are. But, um, you know, when you're around somewhere like this, um, you just wake up every day excited to come and practice. I guess some people might be kind of initially inti intimidated of coming down here, but it really is open for kind of all abilities. You've got the juniors, you've got ladies programs, you've got like the elite players, and you've got the DP World Tour guys as well. That's a big thing to see as well, isn't it? The, uh, can you? <laughs> like, well, do you know what? It's a good. Ex Frank is actually a good example because I think you're right. I think anything you take up that's whether you're a beginner or whether you're joining somewhere, it is quite an intimidating experience. Of course, it is, and the number one number one priority is create an environment where you are comfortable learning and growing and comfortable failing to be honest with you because you don't get anywhere without sort of trying new things and um, everybody's a beginner at something at some point but honestly like create an environment where you feel supported where you where you feel comfortable and where you feel safe to come and practice and grow um, spend time with people socialize it's so so important and I think um, Everybody here so far can be very proud of the job that we're doing at that. And, you know, we just try and grow it every day. And like I say, we're lucky to have the people around here that we have. And um, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, anybody that comes down to the academy is part of something that is a community that is helping each other grow day by day. Moving along, did you enjoy the Ryder Cup? <laughs> uh, I was a bit stressed at times, I've got to say. But, um, uh, yeah, what a amazing experience. Like, you know, for us... I mean, the only task when you get to a Ryder Cup is about winning the Ryder Cup. And um, of course, that is, you know, the sole motivation when you're there. But when you're spending time with the team, the family that you become, all of the things that go with it are the most amazing experiences that we get to that we get to have. And on top of that, you know, winning the Ryder Cup as a team is just so, so cool, that winning feeling. And yeah, it was, uh, 
like I say, a bit stressed and relieved um, towards the end there, but just so happy that we got it done all together. Prior to it, getting the captain's pick from Luke, something that you haven't had to do previously, but do you think there was an added pressure on yourself, maybe by yourself to want to perform, or maybe from outsiders like like media or whatever? Or Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, you know, everybody's goal is to qualify for the team. Of course it is. Because, you know, no matter how... I had a very good year this year. Um, and of course, there's plenty of people that when you're in and around that, you feel like you might be deserving of a pick or you, you know, you're going to be on the team. Nothing's guaranteed. And I was very grateful that Luke showed his faith in me, um, along with the other guys that got a captain selection. And the one thing about once you're part of that team, and especially, you know, Team Europe is such an amazing place to be because whether it's Roy McIlroy, John Rahm or anybody else, you walk into that team room and everybody is equal um, and everybody is just Team Europe and that's it. And I think it's very apparent that everybody is made to feel that way. And um, so, no, you don't feel you, you don't feel pressure from that standpoint. You, you feel pressure from yourself. I think it brings its different challenges, really. All of a sudden you're playing, playing as a team, you're playing for all your teammates, you want it so badly. Um, you're playing for your captain and, and, and there's, that, there's that side of it. Um, but that's just, you know, what the experience of the Ryder Cup is all about. But I think, you know, like I say, I was very grateful for Luke for showing his faith in me and then to put in a good performance along with the rest of the team felt, felt great. And obviously some of those performances you were paired with Rory, is that something that's kind of comfortable with? And were you guys ever amateur competitors uh, in the same team? Or well, actually, it's so, so Rory was just, Rory turned pro young and I turned pro young, and but Rory was just ahead of me in that, in that cycle. Like, um, I feel like for both of us, when you when you turn pro young, you've you've had a very short lifespan of amateur golf, like at the elite level. So it's like you know you kind of get two years each at it, if you like. And Roy was just before me, so we never played together or competed against each other really. But we've you know known each other for a long time from being out on tour, and I think we've been very close. And I think in past Ryder Cups, whenever you go through pairings, I would say me and Roy have always been a possibility, and it's just never worked out. Like always an option, I would say. And, um, and this one, um, particularly in foursomes because of um, Luke was very big on players that use the same golf ball for foursomes. He felt like that was a, a big advantage if you can both be playing the same ball. So um, that worked out for me and Rory and just happens, you know, we're very comfortable with each other. We get, uh, get along and um, I remember us talking about it afterwards, after the um, second day's foursomes, like, you know, you come into the team room or whatever and say how great it was having that opportunity to you know I said I'm not sure Rory felt like it was a great opportunity to play with Tommy Fleetwood but um you know I said to Rory you know I loved you know playing with you and he said it just felt so comfortable like everything was great and and we do get on well and having the opportunity to play in a Ryder Cup alongside Rory was something that was great for me and um yeah glad we got uh, two wins out of it as well and then on the Sunday obviously it was an incredible first two days from Team Europe how aware were you on that final day of kind of how the schools were going and... It's a strange, like, going out in that position, like a, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th, around there. Strange place to be because it's such a different environment that you're playing in by the time it comes to your match in the singles, even teeing off, it's been very quiet during the warm up and everything compared to the first two days. And like the leaderboard, it can fluctuate a bit in singles a lot more than it can do in, especially in the four balls format, but. You want to be, you just want to be prepared and you want to try and win your match. And that was kind of what I was focusing on. It just turned out that there was a bit more emphasis on it than I, may, than maybe uh, I expected. And it was funny, me, me, um, Shane and Bob, when we were sort of warming up in the morning, we were in the physio room and we were doing some stretching and doing some work and we were both sort of laughing about it. All of us said, um, you know, we're very happy that we'll be parading down the last few holes when the when the Ryder Cup's over, hopefully. But it didn't it didn't turn out that way. But again, what an amazing opportunity for for all, you know, for, for us there that were left on the course and um, and Sep. Sep was still out there at the time as well. He was playing the last that, you know, you kind of don't know that bit. You just see the score, so you don't know what situation the players are in out sort of on any particular hole. But um, what an opportunity to you know play such a a pivotal role there towards the end and um, again you know I mean you look at it in simple terms we actually it was six all was it in the single so you just look at it like that and it was six all but it felt pretty uh, it felt pretty stressful towards the end. Sealing the point it's literally what some people say is their dream as a yeah. golfer that's kind of what they want to do and 
you being able to do that is is that what it felt like I, I sort of you know I look back on it and I remember stood on that 16th tee when it came to my shot you know, stood there one good shot away from winning the Ryder Cup and it's like wow you know what a amazing moment for you to have in your career and I think just, you know, you're lucky. You have to make sure that you realise, you know, of all the pressures that are on, of everything that can go right or wrong, what an unbelievable opportunity this is just to, you know, be one good shot away from winning the Ryder Cup for Europe and um, to be able to play that that role at that particular time. Um, I get the chance to remember that for the rest of my life, you know, and I'm glad that, I'm glad of all the shots I've hit in my career, that was one that I put a decent swing on. Can you explain what it is that makes it so special for golfers to be in? And there is something different, isn't there, from European team to the American team? I, yeah, I, yeah, I've said it a few times. The most special place I've ever been in golf is the European team room. Um, for whatever reason that is, it's like, you know, you're playing with, you know, some of the best golfers in the world. And, you know, over previous years, playing with, you know, idols that you've looked up to, you know, throughout your career. And um, I've just found it always, you know, the most amazing experience being in that environment. I think Europe does a phenomenal job of, I think you are made unbelievably aware of what you are playing for and the legacy of European golf is so important to our team. And it's right now we are part of it. Um, and we're playing as carriers of that, but you know it's been going a long time before us, and it'll be you know a long time after us. But we are, at the moment, we're just carrying that legacy for you know for the rest of everybody else, and um, and I think you're just made very aware of that that you're playing for something much bigger than yourselves. And my experiences with Team Europe have just always been phenomenal. And there's team talks, there's being out on the golf course, and there's so many moments throughout my Ryder Cup experiences that. I've just been, you know, what an amazing time and, and things that I look back on and, and remember. And I think it's the same for everybody else as well. And so I guess now it's back to the, the normal day job. <laughs> yeah. And um, I guess down to Ned Bank. You must be yes. excited to head back down there as defending champ. Yeah, it's been kind to me the last uh, few times. And it's a tournament that I've always loved. I remember going there. So I never played it when it was... Um, I never played it when it was the million, when it was the twelve-man field, but I played it when it was. I think it went to sixteen, then nineteen, then thirty or something, and I played all those times. And I was like, "This tournament's unbelievable! It's like such an exclusive one." And and as it's grown, I think it's been amazing for the tournament as well, for more people to get the opportunity to go to Sun City and experience what is honestly, it's it's a lot of people's favorite event. It really, really is from the golf course to just the whole place. And the first time I went. You know, I have such a memory of watching the tournament as a, as a kid and watching the guys that were playing. And then you play the ninth hole and you walk around the water and there's the pathway and it's got everybody's winning plate, you know, the winners over the years. And I, I always remember the first time I went, it's been a goal since to have my name alongside these great names there. And so when I did that the first time, like it was honestly such a special moment for me. And then I remember last time going and walking and waiting because you start at the very start and then my name will be at the end. I remember waiting for that. And then, yeah, to have it on twice is, I'm very, very proud of that. And, you know, I'm looking forward to going back again for sure. We'll see you, well, in about three weeks time, four weeks time for the DP World Tour Challenge. Yeah, we'll be back for that. And um, again, that's, that's something that's cool. It's funny how like things sort of progress and change. All of a sudden it's, it's a home, it's a home event for, for us. And, and I think, you know, I love being part of this community and then um, getting the chance to play now here. Hopefully I get a lot of support and um, it would mean a lot if I could go and uh, maybe hold that trophy one day. We'll keep working at it.